Welcome to the Feel Your Best Formula podcast. Are you over 40 and tired of struggling with your weight, dieting, and constantly feeling like you're starting over with nutrition and fitness? Do you wish you had more energy? Do you want to lose weight and finally keep it off for good? I'm Lil, a certified nutrition coach and former registered nurse. I too have been there, and at the age of 44, I decided I was done with fad diets and chasing a lower number on the scale. I was so tired of constantly starting over and wondering why I couldn't get lasting results. I became a nutrition coach and created the Feel Your Best formula for women who want to build muscle, lose fat, and keep it off for good. If you're ready to build a better relationship with food, the scale, and your body, let's build your formula for feeling your best. If you're new here, make sure to check the episode details for the link to my newbie starter guide. You'll receive an email straight to your inbox with everything you need to start building your Feel Your Best formula. I'm so glad you're here. Now let's dive into today's episode. Welcome to episode 24 of the Feel Your Best Formula podcast. And can I just tell you how excited I am to have this discussion that we're going to have here today on this podcast? I'm going to be honest with you. I think I might get a little bit emotional. And if you came here just looking for checklists and food lists and rules to follow when you're on vacation, I'm telling you off the bat, that is not what this is going to be about. But I encourage you to listen, especially if you came here thinking that there has got to be some sort of secret to staying on track when you're on vacation, because we're going to dive a little bit deeper, a lot deeper. And the reason I wanted to talk about this is because when I got home from vacation, I really had time to reflect and think about what this vacation felt like to me on so many levels. Now, of course, number one, it was really important for our family to get away, get out of New England, have this time together. My oldest son is going to be going off to college in a year. And we hadn't been away since before the pandemic. And we just really, really needed this as a family. And so that was just incredible, even though we experienced horrible travel flight situations on both ends of the trip, the time that we were in Amelia Island, I don't think I mentioned where we went, we went to Amelia Island, Florida, and we just absolutely loved it. It was fantastic. I'm going to be writing a whole blog post on it. But that's where we went. And of course, we enjoyed the vacation aspect. But the other thing I reflected on when I got back as to why this was so enjoyable is I realized that I've had so much personal growth. And I don't think I would have specifically noticed this if we had not gone on vacation. So at the end of the day, what this podcast is really about is our relationships with food and why being on vacation shouldn't really matter. But I know that it is something that we see a lot, that we get asked about a lot as someone who's been in the online wellness space and run accountability groups for almost 10 years. This time of year, summer, is when people always want to know what snacks they should bring, what restaurants they should look for, what to order, and they really want to feel empowered. You want to feel like you can stay on your diet when you're on vacation And often there's a real fear that you going on vacation is going to cause you to gain five or 10 pounds and you're not going to be able to get that weight off. And there's a lot of stress about when you go home and you're going to have to diet. And 
there's just all this really messy, complicated thoughts, behaviors, beliefs that go into feeling like we live one way when we're at home, we live another way when we're on vacation, and this fear that going on vacation can send us into a downward spiral. And I absolutely have had those thoughts and beliefs myself. I have definitely gone on vacations, gained a ton of weight, done some sort of cleanse or whatever when I got back to quote, get back on track. And today let's talk about why we feel that way and I hope have a little bit of a different perspective. So today I'm going to share with you a little of my own experience. I'm definitely going to get more vulnerable than I've really been on this podcast before. Um, And we're going to talk about the word orthorexia. So this is a term that was new to me, and I honestly hadn't even heard it until I decided to become a certified nutrition coach. And as I was educating myself, and that included taking my online certification through the National Academy of Sports Medicine, but also I did a lot of ancillary things, you know, just following different people, looking up information on nutrition, and really just trying to soak up everything I could so that I could be the best coach possible. And I came across this term orthorexia. If you have not heard this before, I'll just share a loose definition of what it's considered. It's not considered a true mental health diagnosis at this point. I'm wondering if at some point it will be. It's not anorexia. It's not bulimia. It's not binge eating disorder. And I personally do not fall into any of those categories with having a true eating disorder. But orthorexia, what I would describe it as is disordered thoughts and behaviors when it comes to food, placing a value on food choices, the foods that you're eating, and having excessive worry, obsession over whether or not the foods that you're eating are actually healthy for you and being really obsessed with only eating foods that you truly believe are healthy for you where it gets to a point that you're having negative thoughts, emotions, behaviors. You may even start judging other people and it really starts consuming your everyday moment to moment life. And I definitely related to this. I was reading about it and it was like this huge light bulb went off in my head that so many of those thoughts, feelings, and behaviors that I'd had around food for the last 10 or 15 years were unhealthy and that this obsession with being healthy was actually unhealthy. And that's really what orthorexia is. When I look back at my own experience with orthorexia and when these disordered thoughts and behaviors started, it goes back, I'm talking 15 years ago um, or more, actually, even in my 20s, when I think to the first program I did, it was a program called Body for Life, which I don't, it's again, it's an older program, but I bought a book and he had a diet program and a workout program and you followed it. And it was really my first experience with dedicating myself to nutrition and fitness. And I lost a bunch of weight. I would go on the little treadmill in my apartment building. I would make my little meals of salmon and asparagus and brown rice, and I would measure it according to my palm size. And I followed that diet. I also, from there, I started the next person I started following was. Tosca Reno. Now, these are the days before social media, really before people really use the internet for a whole lot. And so these are books that I got out of the library or bought at the bookstore. And that was really my biggest resource was reading these books. And I started to dive into nutrition. I wanted to have all the answers of what healthy eating was. And Tosca Reno is known 
as the queen of clean eating and started, she basically started the whole clean eating movement. And I, I personally was looking to strive to eat in a way that would be super healthy. Of course, I wanted to, you know, look a certain way. I wanted to live longer, you know, all those reasons that we seek out healthier habits and ways of living. But when I look back at the messaging in these books, while a lot of the information then was wonderful, explaining the value of whole foods and how to eat a balanced diet and how to read food labels. Some of the messaging in those books were also very disordered. I specifically remember in the Body for Life book where the author who followed this super, super, super strict diet talked about how Once a year on his birthday, his mother would make him spaghetti and meatballs. And even though it was his favorite meal, it was the only day of the year that he would eat spaghetti and meatballs. And I just remember thinking, oh my gosh, he's dedicated. And also a little bit of a warning bell went off in my head when I read that because it just seemed really extreme to me. Like, can spaghetti and meatballs really be that bad for you? And then when I read Toscarino's book about clean eating, she had very similar comments where she spoke about birthday cake and how she would allow herself one bite of birthday cake a year. And I mean, that just sounds really sad. Now I look back and realize it's really disordered. But at the same time, I was impressed. I thought, oh, that's like so dedicated. She's so healthy. She's going to live forever. You know, it just seems like hashtag goals. I think that's when I really started to have these disordered thoughts where this messaging of only eating whole foods and only using certain oils and only eating foods that have specific nutrient values was something that I started to take to heart. And I didn't realize it at the time, but it was something that over time started to build and build. And over the years, I continued to become more interested and more committed to my health and wellness, working out, eating healthier. I started following the Beachbody nutrition programs when I became a Beachbody coach. And I I love them, to be honest, at the start when I did the little containers I just thought this was awesome. It was just going to be really easy to, quote, stay on track and only eat those approved foods because now I had this plan that was telling me these are the only foods I should be eating. And if I eat this way, I'm going to lose weight. It's going to be great for my health. And again, all those reasons that we want to eat healthier. But to be honest, the programs that I followed for the next 10 years only created more of these disordered thoughts in my head. And I was just not aware of it because here's the thing, (laughs) please listen to me in this next sentence because I think it's so important. The problem with orthorexia is it is a wolf in sheep's clothing. And that's because when it comes to orthorexia, you're saying you want to be healthy. You want to be healthier. That's amazing, right? Like who doesn't want to be healthier? Who doesn't want to feel good? And I will say for me personally, the orthorexia came from certain aspects of the diets I was following. The biggest one I've alluded to here on this podcast is the idea that there are lists of foods that are approved, that are are okay for you to eat. And then you either have all the other foods in the world that are not on that list, or there may even be foods that you're being told to avoid, like gluten or dairy or things like that, which unless you have an actual bona fide allergy or metabolic condition, that means you should not eat those foods. There is no reason that you should be avoiding them because they provide wonderful nutrients to your body. So. I talked about, you know, you could be really extreme with your orthorexia where only once a year having that bite of birthday cake or whatever. And, you know, orthorexia is a wolf in sheep's clothing because you're having these thoughts and behaviors because you think you're doing something good for yourself. 
and you believe that you're following these rules that will ultimately benefit you in the long run and you're going to have better long-term health and there's just going to be all these other ways that your life is going to be better because you're following these food rules. But here's the problem. When you follow diets like this, it creates unnecessary, and that's the key word, unnecessary stress, anxiety, judgment issues with self-esteem, negative emotions when it comes to eating and choosing your foods. And for me, the, the way I would describe it and what I notice most on my vacation, and this is what prompted me to do this podcast episode, is I no longer had this cloud hanging over me on my vacation. And what do I mean by this cloud? What it means is when I've gone on vacations or perhaps gone to social events in the past, there was always this thought bubble following me around, this cloud over my head, judging my choices. And yeah, I could say, let me have a burger or like, to be honest for me, I have a sweet tooth. So let me have dessert. Let me, you know, have this ice cream sundae or a piece of cake, but always, 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 every single time I would do that, there would be this voice in the back of my head telling me I was being bad and I was doing something wrong and what I was doing would be harmful to my health. So if you are listening to this and you can relate to this, I am emotional for you right now because I know that you may not even realize how damaging this is for you because you think that you're doing something that's healthy for yourself by believing that only following certain food rules is going to benefit you in the long run. Okay, let me just take a breath there. So what the heck does this have to do with quote unquote, staying on track during vacation, because that's what we're talking about on this episode. Well, it has everything to do with it because number one, when we talk about going on vacation and staying on track, we're acting as if we are two different people when we go on vacation versus when we're at home. And at the end of the day, the truth is you are who you are, no matter where you are. And if you're feeling like you don't know what choices you should be making on your vacation, that is very disempowering. And what I think is more empowering is feeling educated by knowing how to eat in any situation and also understanding that one meal or even a whole week of meals, however long your vacation is, at the end of the day, that does not define you. If you, in your day-to-day life, are making food choices that are in alignment with your long-term health goals, the way that makes you feel good, then you're going to want to eat that same way when you're on vacation. And you're not going to want to go off the rails. You're not going to want to be binge drinking. You're not going to want to be binge eating. You know that phrase, you know, no matter where you, what is it? No matter where you are, there you there you are. And it's just so true. You are who you are, no matter where you are, whether you're at home, whether you're on vacation. And when you are someone who understands the habits that create who you are, and you feel that the habits that you have in your day-to-day life reflect the person you want to be, it's going to be a no-brainer for you to go on vacation and continue those habits. So on the flip side, if you're currently following a restrictive way of eating, or you're really confused and you don't feel good about the way that you're eating on a day-to-day basis, then it is going to be really hard to stay on track during vacation. And every time I say stay on track, please understand there's air quotes around that, even though you can't see me, because what does that even mean? And if you're following a plan that has very limited approved foods and you're cutting out food groups, then yeah, it's probably going to be very stressful for you and require a lot of planning on your part. When I say restrictive, I mean any diet where certain foods are off limits, or you're supposed to not eat carbs or sugar or gluten or 
even if you're doing some sort of timed eating, like intermittent fasting, that can be really difficult to stick to when you're outside your normal environment. And I would say those diets are actually pretty hard to stick to even when you're in your day-to-day environment. So what really prompted me to do this podcast episode was how I felt when we first arrived. I realized for the first time, despite that we had the worst experience traveling to get to Amelia Island, our plane was diverted to a different airport and we had to circle around. We had to refuel, go back to the original landing spot where we missed our connection Long story short, we ended up having to fly to Savannah and then drive two hours and arrived at our destination at 2 a.m. when we were supposed to arrive at 11 a.m. the day before. So believe me, I was tired. I was grumpy. (laughs) I was all the things. But the one thing I wasn't stressed out about was my diet. We got up the next day. We had to go to a different airport to pick up our luggage. And on the way home, my son and I stopped at Publix and we did shopping. And honestly, I didn't even have a grocery list because all I did was buy more convenient versions of the foods that we normally eat at home and a lot of the same exact foods we eat at home, like the yogurts that we eat. I bought cut up fruit. I bought pre-made salads. I bought uh, baby bell cheese. I bought bagels. Then we also had chips and um, tortilla chips and salsa. And at no point was I trying to think to myself, oh, I have to be following this certain diet. I just knew how we eat. And I knew that I was going to load up my cart with all those foods that we enjoy and didn't really think twice about it. There was no guilt or worry hanging over me. And believe me, I have felt that way in the past. And I kind of had this big aha moment where I realized it was all just going to be so easy, not because I was following a plan, not because I had some sort of list of approved foods or rules to follow. It was going to be easy because of who I am today and the way that I live my day-to-day life and how I've changed my relationship with food for the better. And I'll also say here, we ate out every single meal, except for I made breakfast twice. Um, We rented a condo and it had a full kitchen, but um, mom's on vacation too. I don't want to be cooking every night. So we agreed in the beginning, that was the plan. This was vacation. We're going to be eating out. It was a resort with multiple restaurants where, you know, you just charge it to the room and we had no issues for any meal that we ate out where... I wasn't sitting there making crazy substitutions or anything. I was just ordering the foods that I knew were in alignment with the foods that I like to eat and that were going to make me feel good. And it was really no big deal. I'm going to go through with you some of the mindset shifts that I have personally worked through in the past couple of years that affect my everyday life, but also really made this vacation enjoyable. So here we go. Number one, no food is morally good or bad. And you are not good or bad based on the foods you choose to eat. How many times? Have you, at the end of the day, thought back on the foods that you ate that day and said, oh, I was so bad today. You know, maybe you went to a baseball game and you had hot dogs or an Italian sausage and you had ice cream and you had popcorn and it was such a fun day. And then at the end of the day, you end up feeling lousy because you think, oh, I was so bad today. I had, you know, beer, I had hot dogs, I had all these things. And it just doesn't make you feel good. Well, guess what? At the end of the day, no food is morally good or bad. It simply contains macronutrients and micronutrients that are either in alignment with how you want to fuel your body, or they are providing you some emotional enjoyment that is also important. But your food is not good or bad, and neither are you for consuming it. 
Number two, food is either nourishing my body in a way that supports my physical goals or I'm really enjoying it while I'm eating it. This kind of goes back to the morally good or bad, but I want to point out that both of these things are really important to my physical and mental well-being. I'm someone that loves food. I enjoy food. I love trying new foods and understanding how those foods are supporting my physical needs of my body, the goals that I want to reach is also really important to my enjoyment and prioritizing those foods like protein, like fiber, making sure that I'm getting fruits, veggies, all of those, you know, quote unquote, healthy foods in, that is the main priority. But there's always still still room for the ice cream, you know, if you're a savory person, a small bag of chips, and you can make food for those foods that you really enjoy. And to me, if someone told me that I would never be able to have a bowl of ice cream again, I would just be so sad because I really enjoy ice cream and it makes me feel good. But also, I am not sitting around eating a huge bowl of ice cream every night. I pick and choose where I fit those foods in, and I really enjoy the foods that nourish my body and support my physical goals. So it's a win-win. I am not feeling restricted at all, and it's really this incredible feeling of freedom. So number three, I'm really clear on my short and long-term goals for my health and wellness, and my health is really important to me, and I know that nutrition is a big part of my long-term health. I acknowledge that having excess body fat is not good for me, and I'm willing to do what it takes to make sure that I don't gain too much body fat. I'm willing to make the choices that support those long-term goals versus my short-term wants. And that requires making choices at your meals. It requires making choices at the grocery store. It requires making choices at social events. But the way that I eat now, it's really enjoyable to make those choices that are in alignment. And again, I don't feel deprived or restricted because I'm educated and I know what I need to do that works for me physically and mentally. Number four, I've learned that eating three really large filling meals per day is what works best for me. I will snack if I get hungry, but I really do best with having large meals that keep me full. I find that I don't obsess about food when I was trying to follow a diet where it was like you ate every two to three hours. I was always freaking hungry and thinking about my next meal and thinking that I was doing something good for me, there is absolutely no scientific proof that eating six small meals a day in any way supports, you know, increased metabolism or anything like that. It's just a bunch of nonsense. So number five, and this is something I feel very strongly about, I believe we all do need some form of structure or education or a plan where we learn how to fuel our bodies. And the reason I love macro counting is because I've said it before, your body's already counting macros. When you eat a meal, your body like is taking that food that you're consuming and it's filing it away. It is counting your macros, and if you can count your macros before you put it in your mouth, you're just going to make it more efficient for your body to do what it needs to do to support your health. And anyone can learn this. You don't have to go and become a certified nutrition coach. You can join my group coaching community. You can book a one-on-one session with me. You could go out and research it for yourself and try to figure it out for yourself, but At the end of the day, when it comes to any diet out there, at the end of the day, your body only cares what macronutrients and micronutrients you are feeding it. So I believe that we all need some sort of structure to educate ourselves, but we also need the freedom to fill in the details. And I call this structured freedom. And it's exactly how I approach my food. 
and my food choices. And this is exactly how I teach my clients how to approach their choices. Number six, I weigh myself every day. And this is something that I started doing a few years ago when I was doing the 2B Mindset program. And it's one of the favorite things that I took away from that program, even though overall the program really did not work for me. It didn't provide enough structure that I needed, but weighing myself every day and really changing my perspective on the scale and realizing that it really is just a tool and you do not gain two pounds of fat overnight and you don't lose two pounds of fat overnight. And just understanding that you're really just looking for the trend or in my case, over the past three months or more, actually more than that, I've been looking to just maintain. And I actually had the scale start going down for a while and I had to start eating more because I was inadvertently losing weight. So the scale is just a tool. And when you can have that relationship with it, it is the best feeling in the world. And it's an excellent way to track certain types of progress, but it isn't the only way. And it's limited in the type of information that it can give you. So the last thing is fitness. And this is something that I realized on vacation that my perspective of fitness has really changed. I've talked on here before about how I've given up this feeling that I need to stick to a workout calendar. And really it's about putting your life first and then understanding how you can fit your workouts in, in a way that you know doesn't stress you out, doesn't give you anxiety, doesn't make you feel like you need to quote unquote make up workouts or do a double workout to make up for one that you missed. Because we got to Amelia Island, like I said, at 2 a.m. I think we finally went to bed around 3 a.m. I think Mike and I woke up around 6 and we were like, let's hit the gym. Let's go check it out. And it had an awesome gym. We were so happy with the gym at the resort. And we ended up going, I think, a total of three times. And we were only there we were there for six days and um, he went running on the beach. I unfortunately still limited because of my ankle situation, but it was a no brainer. And again, we enjoy our workouts. So why not enjoy them while on vacation? And maybe you're someone that goes on vacation and is like, okay, this is the week I'm going to take to you know, take a rest week and take a deload week and take a break from my workouts. And that's totally fine too. Taking a week off from your workouts is not going to really do anything. Um, takes three weeks or more to start losing muscle mass or seeing any sort of major decrease in, you know, what you've built up as far as your fitness level. So taking a week off and deciding that you're going to sleep in or you're going to go for a walk on the beach or what have you, go for a bike ride, do that. Enjoy it. You, If you don't like going to the you know gym at the hotel or whatever, you don't have one, it's not going to make or break your results. And you just have to decide what your ideal vacation looks like for you. And I would say if you're looking at vacation as a chance to escape from feeling like you're on a diet or um, you're just thinking to yourself, I'm just going to eat all the food and I'm just going to binge on everything and I'm going to you know, drink every night and you're just really looking forward to that vacation so that you can be an entirely different person than the person you are at home, then that might be something that you want to think about because why not enjoy your day-to-day life as much as, or almost as much as a vacation? You know, when we were there for, I don't know, we were probably, probably on day four, I looked at my husband and I was just said, you know, I'm really enjoying it. This is really nice, but I'm also really looking forward to getting home because I enjoy my day-to-day life. I like going to bed and, you know, my nighttime routine and I missed my dog. I'm going to say that was a big part of it. I miss Jade, 
but I love my routine. I love my morning routine. I love my work that I do. I love my friends that I have. And it was great to get away, but it was just the perfect amount of time. And also, when I got home, I didn't mention this yet. When I got home, I got on the scale the next day. And guess what? My weight was the exact same down to the decimal point as it had been the day before we left. And while we were on vacation, I did not track one macro. I did not weigh myself. I did not track my weights that I used at the gym. None of that. I gave myself a break from all the tracking, but it made me realize that, you know, this is what being empowered and educating yourself, this is the benefit of it. It is having a healthy lifestyle on autopilot. I didn't come home and say, oh, I need to do a three-day detox or I need to start a diet or anything like that. While we were away, I did realize that I had really reached this really comfortable place and I've been building muscle for, you know, a good three months now and doing a really good job at it. And so I said, you know what, let me when we go home, I think I am ready. Because here's the thing, your mental headspace has to be in the right space to go into a calorie deficit or any sort of intentional fat loss mode. And I said, I think I'm ready to take off a little bit of this extra body fat because basically what happened was I broke my ankle. Um, It was really bad. It was about eight weeks of very limited activity and then it was slow activity afterwards And I'm still not 100%, but I was able to start weightlifting again in January very slowly and build that muscle back. But I do weigh more now and I have more body fat than I am used to. And I've really built this muscle. I can see the change in my arms. I can see the change in my legs. I can see the change in my butt. And I know that if I do a little bit of a calorie deficit and start shedding some body fat, that my arms are going to get that more toned look. Like that's what everybody wants, right? Like you want to be to look toned. Well, the way that you do that is you have to build the muscle that's underneath and then you reveal it by taking off some of the fat. So I said, you know what, let me start with a three week deficit. I'm just going to cut back on my calories by 300 calories per day and increase my protein so that I don't lose this muscle mass. And that's where I am right now. And I've only been doing it now, I guess, for three days while I'm recording this to you. I'll be about a week in by the time you listen to it. But I just knew I was mentally ready after spending decades always either being on a diet or feeling like I should be on a diet. The healthiest thing I did for myself, because again, I'm not someone that had excess body fat to the point that it was causing any sort of metabolic issues. Um, The healthiest thing I did was live in maintenance, meaning eating the correct amount of calories for my body to maintain the weight that it was at. And I've been eating in maintenance for months and months and months. I've probably been eating in maintenance for over a year now with just the little blip with um, my ankle where I did gain some weight. And I use that to my advantage to build some muscle. And I'm sorry if I'm confusing you. The awesome thing about macros is that you can use your macro count like a thermostat and you can adjust for the goals that you want. And that's what I love the most about it. So now I'm going to move to taking off some of this body fat and revealing those muscles that I've built. And I'm going to do it for a pretty short amount of time. And then I'm just going to go straight back into maintenance because it was really, really enjoyable to live there, have it be on autopilot, go on vacation. That's the other thing. I cannot imagine going on vacation and deciding that that is the right time to be in a calorie deficit, to try to be losing weight. You can always take a pause 
on your macros and just go to maintenance for the week that you're on vacation and then get back into a calorie deficit when you get back if that's you know where you're at where you really need to lose some weight and you can just play around with it and being a nutrition coach part of what i like to do is help my clients decide what is right for them should they be in maintenance should they be working on building muscle should they be working on weight loss and helping them make those decisions and feel good about those decisions because i will tell you right now that constantly being on a diet constantly feeling like you lose weight is a losing game. It is you end up chasing your tail, you end up feeling defeated. It is, it gets you nowhere. And what I love about what I do is I help women start taking those steps in that direction where they feel empowered and educated. And I have to say my personal experience with going on this vacation was amazing. And I got home and I just thought if I could snap my fingers and help every other woman who's been feeling this way for decades, you know, feeling like you have to be on a diet and you should be a diet and you're guilty for eating certain foods. And maybe you do have some of those symptoms and experiences of orthorexia it's time to say goodbye to it. It's time to start enjoying your life. It's time to stop having that diet cloud hanging over your head. All right, I'm going to leave us there. I don't know if this episode is what you expected. It came from my heart. I hope it made sense and know that you can always reach out to me if you have questions or comments. And I will be back here next week with another episode. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for tuning into today's episode of the Feel Your Best Formula podcast. If you haven't already, make sure to check the episode details for my new listener starter guide and any additional resources mentioned in the episode can also be found in the show notes on my website. You can always find me on Instagram at macros with Lil. And for more healthy lifestyle tips, recipes, and information on my one-to-one and group coaching services, make sure to check out my website. All the links can be found below. If you know someone else who is ready to start building their formula for feeling their best, please share the love and send them a link to the podcast. I hope you found today's episode helpful and I'll see you back here next week for a brand new one.